the Slender Man, a being that was discovered after awful forms and a threat center around photos of a singular fire, which killed many children in the 1980s. He is described as wearing a black suit and black top hat. He appears very thin and is able to stretch his limbs and torso to unhuman lengths. That strategy is used to induce fear. Detective Rick Hill, FBI, and today is October 25th, 1993. I'm reviewing a young girl's story about two killings in The girl's name is Rachel Hayes. Her best friend and her best friend's father were killed in 1984. The case went cold after several months. Her father, Matthew Hayes, was blamed for the murders, but later on was released from lack of evidence to pin him to the murders. The victims' bodies were never found, only blood. The case is top secret because of its status being FBI case file 479, classified. We have to investigate the truth, no matter what. Even after we find the truth in a case such as this, it will remain top secret. The young girl was seven at the time. She is now 16. She suffers from schizophrenia and is diagnosed psychopathic and could be well danger to herself and others. Hence why she is well medicated before our meeting takes place. I was told she has some sort of creepy vibe about her, some sort of dark energy. I don't know. I can't wait to meet her. I hope uh, she's here. Let me move this over here. Come on in. Hi, Rachel. Come on in. Have a seat. Hi. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, sure. Hey, let me get this recorder over here. All right, I'll put it right here. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Yes. You don't mind the camera over here, do you? I'm recording everything. You okay with that? I don't mind. Let me know if you need a break or to go to the restroom, but I have to record this. Okay. Are you recording now? Matter of fact, I am. Is that okay? Mm hmm I'm going to take notes also. Rachel, let's begin. I told people about your story, and they don't believe it. I even looked up Slender Man. I found stories and pictures online, but it just doesn't make sense. From what I found, it's just images created from Photoshop. It was for some sort of picture contest. There are those who believe, but more people disagree with your story. You believe what your heart tells you. Those people who believe my father killed my friend and her father then scratched me and bruised me are idiots. My dad told me those people are stuck in denial and would rather walk around blindfolded than know the truth. What do you think? It's not what I think. It's what I witnessed. It's what the FBI found. The bruises on my arms and legs. The blood. What about your father? He was held responsible. How does that make you feel? Alone. 
sad angry he was released you know yeah I know I feel like the people who blame my dad the police the government they should be taken by slender men well that's not nice your question isn't nice okay sorry if I offended you don't do it again <laughs> I'm joking I can't tell you, you just look so serious Anyways, here's some water if you get thirsty. Thank you. Ready? I thought we already started. Yes, but I just needed to ask you a couple of questions. Now you can tell your story. Oh, okay. You're on. Tell your story. It's okay. Go ahead. I was seven when I saw it. I was chasing my friend in the woods at a fishing trip. Her name was Mandy. We ran off leaving my father with his friend Kyle, Mandy's dad. They were busy drinking and talking about the old days. We ran all around in the woods, but we kept close by, close enough to where we could hear my father's radio play. Mandy then pointed at some trees. She asked me did I see what she saw. She told me she saw a skinny tall man walking but it didn't look like a man. It... Go on. It looked like a skinny tree branch or something odd and creepy with arms and legs. She kept her eyes gazing at what looked like a dozen of dark branches hanging down from a tree in the woods. She wouldn't turn away. I finally stared with her, holding her hand. I thought maybe she really did see something then. There it was. I squinted my eyes. I couldn't barely make it out what it was. But there was a person, a thing. It was weird looking, very odd. My heart sped up. I was afraid. It just stayed still like it belonged to one of the trees. I felt Mandy's hand shake. I was frightened as well. The slender man finally moved. He moved his long, skinny legs and started walking towards us, slowly, creepily. <laughs> Come on, I'm okay. Come on. Do you want, do you want to go on? Yes. I, I just need a break, just. Okay, take your time. <sighs> I'm ready. He started walking towards us, slowly, creepy-like. I wanted to scream, but I could not. I was frozen in fear. This thing had no face. It was faceless. No eyes, no mouth, no ears, nothing. Just skin. It looked like it had on a suit of some sort. Like a business suit with a tie. I tried to turn my head to call for my father, but I could not. It walked so creepily. <laughs> like it, like it wanted to take its time. Like it knew how scared we were and it wanted it wanted us to know that from behind its back. Long dark tentacles sprouted out, dancing around like dozens of snakes. I remember trying to move my feet, but I could not. The Slender Man was 12 feet from us now. I could feel Mandy fighting, and so was I. Something was compelling us there in that spot. And the Slender Man reached us. He looked down at us. His arms hung down well. His hands wide with long bony fingers. It even has sharp nails. The slender man reached out his long skinny hand, then touched my cheek with his bony dark finger. It was a gentle touch. He then caressed Mandy's cheek. Mandy started crying. So did I. Okay. 
city. I couldn't make out if it was dangerous or friendly. It just had no facial expression. It just tilted its head to the side like it was studying us. I felt like I had to say something, so I did. And somehow the words came out my mouth. What's your name? I said. And this slender man then rubbed his bunny finger through my hair. It did not respond to my question. I started to cry. I then heard my father call my name, Rachel. The slender man grabbed me, and Mandy then ran. It moved so fast as if it didn't have legs, and it might have been floating off the ground. Me and Mandy were tossed around like rag dolls in the air as we were being held by the dark snake-looking tentacles. I then heard my father scream and yell. It sounded like he was chasing after us. All I can see is tree branches and leaves, the ground, rocks, my body being tossed around. I even see Mandy being twisted and thrown around, looking helpless. We both were screaming. We couldn't break free. Then, there was a gunshot. I fell in some mud. I sat there. I seen the Slender Man holding its side like it was hurt. It faced me. It scratched my stomach really hard, tearing through my dress and my flesh, making me bleed out. Are you okay? You can go Yeah, yeah, I can. I then seen it do something do the most horrific thing. Right where the mouth should be, a thin line appeared. A mouth formed. The mouth opened, revealing skinny, sharp, long teeth. Mandy and I screamed. I tried to run, but was held by a tentacle. It took a massive bite out of Mandy. That slender man started <laughs> eating Mandy. <laughs> it, it ate her. It ate her. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't save her. <laughs> Here's some tissue, Rachel. Here. You want to go on? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. I can stop recording, and uh, we can schedule this for another time, if you want me to. No, don't. Ready. He was so vicious in the attack on her. Blood was everywhere. I screamed. I screamed as loud as I could. Mandy died instantly. Half of her was eaten. Nothing left but a leg and mangled up pieces of her torso. The slender man took off disappearing into the dark wooded area. My father found me covered in blood. Kyle came out from some trees holding a pistol. He fell to the ground crying, holding a piece of his daughter's dress. The torn fabric was soaked in her blood. He must have witnessed Slenderman killing his daughter. We hurried back to the cabin. It was getting late, fast. My father grabbed his fishing equipment, then hurried back to the cabin with me and Kyle. In a way, I was still stuck in that moment, that moment when I saw Mandy get killed. It played back in my mind over and over and over again. I was so traumatized. I still am. My father with Kyle started locking up the cabin. My father stitched me up to care my wound. It hurt so bad. I cried. I cried more. 
I wanted to pass out, but was too afraid to. If I was to think, I don't think I could have, knowing that I could share the same fate as my best friend. Night came. We all could not sleep. Kyle, Kyle wouldn't say a word. He just sat there, mourning his daughter, as I did the same. She was my best friend. My father didn't see what had happened, but he knew by looking at Kyle and that Mandy was gone. My father kissed my head as he held me, telling me that everything is going to be all right. I wanted to believe it, but knew it wasn't true. He looked at his watch, his watch and said, 10 a.m., we can do this. Go to sleep, my angel. A few minutes later, there was a knock on the door. It was slow, but then it got louder. A familiar voice was heard. Then it ended with an evil laugh. It sounded like Mandy, but it wasn't, it wasn't her. The voice was heard, but then it turned demonic and deep. It started laughing as it kept knocking on the door. What did the voice say? It said, Daddy, Slenderman is my friend now. Open the door. He wants to play with you all. Then she laughed. It wasn't Mandy. The knocking got more intense. Kyle got fed up and ran to the door. He unlocked it with his gun drawn. As soon as Kyle opened the door, his body was snatched up with such force. It looked as if he was snapped in half. My father ran to the door to shut it. When he got to the door, the slender man poked his head downward like he was looking at my father. My father slammed the door shut, then locked it. It felt like forever till sunrise. We didn't get any sleep. All we heard all night was the knocking, but we knew it wasn't them. At sunrise, my father told me to stay put. He opened the door and had a look around. He ran back to me, then picked me up. He ran leaving his fishing equipment behind and carrying me, running as fast as he could to the car. As he ran with me in his arms, I could see over his shoulder, near the brush of the trees, right next to the cabin, Slender Man stood, not moving, not breathing, just watching me, finished. That's pretty creepy. Yeah. We're done here, Rachel. Thanks for your story. You're welcome. Are you going to be okay? You're not. What? Oh. What the hell was that? The lights started flickering. Oh. That was, that was creepy. Rachel, why are, you, why are you staring at me like that? Rachel. Rachel. What are you looking at? He's standing right behind you. Who? What? Oh my god! Ah!